Hey, Sean. There were two food containers in the fridge. Did you take them to work with you? Yeah, I took them. Why, did you need them for something? Well, they weren't leftovers. That was food that I made to take to my parents' house today. My mom is stuck in bed after she hurt her hip. I told you I was going to go over there today to bring some food and help out around the house a bit. Oh, sorry. You never told me what those boxes were for. You should have labeled them or something so it was clear. I distinctly remember telling you about this yesterday. I don't remember saying anything about the food. I remember you said that your mom was hurt, but that's it. It's no big deal, though. You're off work again today, right? Just make it again or run to the store and grab something pre-made. It's already 8 a.m. I don't have enough time to do the shopping and then cook it all again before I'm supposed to be there. I could take something ready-made, I guess, but I spent time on that food. I hoped it would lift her spirits since she can't get around much right now. Well, what do you want me to do about it? I can't bring it back now. I'm too far away from the house. I'm sorry, but there's nothing I can do to help you now. There was a lot of food in those boxes. Why would you think it's okay to take that much food for your lunch? Does it matter? You want me to come all the way back now? Well, no, but... Then there's nothing to be done. That's all there is to it. It is what it is. You'll have to figure something else out. Fine, whatever. And also, don't contact me like this for every little thing just because you can't handle things on your own. Especially when there's nothing I can do. And don't ever contact me at work. Sorry. I just got to the office. I'll talk to you later. Hey, Sean. There were two food containers in the fridge. Did you take them to work with you? Yeah, I took them. Why, did you need them for something? Well, they weren't leftovers. That was food that I made to take to my parents' house today. My mom is stuck in bed after she hurt her hip. I told you I was going to go over there today to bring some food and help out around the house a bit. Oh, sorry. You never told me what those boxes were for. You should have labeled them or something so it was clear. I distinctly remember telling you about this yesterday. I don't remember saying anything about the food. I remember you said that your mom was hurt, but that's it. It's no big deal, though. You're off work again today, right? Just make it again or run to the store and grab something pre-made. It's already 8 a.m. I don't have enough time to do the shopping and then cook it all again before I'm supposed to be there. I could take something ready-made, I guess, but I spent time on that food. I hoped it would lift her spirits since she can't get around much right now. Well, what do you want me to do about it? I can't bring it back now. I'm too far away from the house. I'm sorry, but there's nothing I can do to help you now. There was a lot of food in those boxes. Why would you think it's okay to take that much food for your lunch? Does it matter? You want me to come all the way back now? Well, no, but... Then there's nothing to be done. That's all there is to it. It is what it is. You'll have to figure something else out. Fine, whatever. And also... Don't contact me like this for every little thing just because you can't handle things on your own. Especially when there's nothing I can do. And don't ever contact me at work. Sorry. I just got to the office. I'll talk to you later. What in the world was that food you made? It was awful. There was nothing to it but grease. Parts of it were completely uncooked too. I thought you made this for your mom. There is no way that food would make anyone feel better about anything. It wasn't something that was ready to eat. My brother and his wife came in today too to visit mom. I prepared what was in those boxes to take over to her house and finish cooking there. Even still, there was something really wrong with it. I'm used to your cooking being bland, but that was just gross. Seriously? You took food that wasn't made for you and then turn around and insult me? 
I'm starving. I ate nothing but the sides. You'd be in a bad mood too if all you had to eat was a little cold corn and a piece of bread. I still wouldn't be talking like that to you though. Whatever. Just pack me a little more to eat next time so I have a little more options if something doesn't taste right. This one was way too small. What are you talking about? There was a lot of food in there. I made it to share with my entire family. Surely it was enough for one person. There was a good amount in there today, I guess, but still. I'm usually starving by the time dinner comes around because there isn't enough food in my lunch. Just pack a little more tomorrow, please. Well, I don't know if I'll have time to stop by the store today after visiting. If you're able to grab the food you want on the way home today, I'd be happy to put it in your lunch tomorrow. Oh, that's right. You're at your parents' house now. Surely there's a store near their place, right? Just stop on your way home. You're off work today and tomorrow, so you'll be fine. Fine, I'll get something. But you need to promise me something. You need to be careful and not eat too much food. It's not good for you. If I wanted an opinion about my health, I would ask a doctor. Besides, I'm in the shape of my life. That's not something I need to worry about. Unlike you, I can lose weight without having to exercise. A little bit of weight might actually look good on me, anyway. I mean, I guess a few pounds wouldn't hurt, but still. Shouldn't you be careful with your health? Stop nagging me. I'll be fine. You really know nothing about what men need, huh? I guess your ignorance is understandable since I'm the only real man you've ever been in a relationship with. Since it's not something you're familiar with, I'll let it go this time. But please, just do as I say and put more food in my lunch tomorrow, okay? Okay, I will. Also, I want you to make fried chicken for dinner tonight. Something fried sounds amazing right now. Really? There was a lot of fried food in that lunch you took, though. If that sounds good, why didn't you eat that? That was fried onion and, like, ingredient kind of stuff, not fried chicken. Those are two completely different foods. Okay, I'll see what I can do. Why didn't you say anything about your mom planning on staying with us for a little while? I didn't know anything about it before we talked about it at dinner. I guess she just decided on her own, but it's fine. It's not like she'll be any trouble. Why, are you trying to say I should kick my own mother out of our house? No, I guess not. She's just feeling lonely since my dad is away on business so much right now. She's just looking for a little company is all. If you think it's a problem, you need to say something to her. One more person won't make a big difference as far as food or utilities. And she said she was willing to help out around the house. I know, but it still seems really sudden. Shouldn't she have just said something before just showing up and expecting us to take her in for however long she wants to stay? Dinner was one thing, but staying at her house as a guest for an extended period is another. I would have at least appreciated a little warning. So she'll be staying for us for a few days. I really don't get why you're making a big deal out of it. She's my mom, so it's my job to make sure she's taken care of. If you don't like it, feel free to stay at a hotel until she goes home. I don't care either way. Yeah, I don't think that's a good solution either. Maybe not. If you did that, she would probably be offended. You don't want to see her get angry. I already know that you wouldn't be able to handle it. She'd make you cry in about three seconds flat. That's a horrible thing to say. Not just about me, but about your mom. She can't be that bad. There's nothing mean about it. It's just fact. Don't try and act like you know better than me. Not about my mom, not about anything. I'm sorry. Look, I need you to promise me that you won't talk much while she's with us. You want to make her feel welcome. You do want to make her feel welcome, right? Of course I do. Hey. Something's wrong with my suit. Did you wash it yourself? I told you to take it to the dry cleaners. Huh? No, I didn't clean it. 
I took it to the same dry cleaner I always do. I just picked it up yesterday. There's no way it went to the cleaners. It's definitely shrunk somehow. I feel like it's gonna rip every time I sit down. And there's a stain on the jacket. I have no idea how that happened. I swear I just picked it up yesterday and put it straight into the closet. I can take it back tomorrow. That doesn't do me any good today. And don't go to that cleaner anymore. They clearly don't know what they're doing. What are you thinking? You should have known something was off about that place. You're so irresponsible. I wish you could do something right just once. You're so damn lazy. I didn't do anything. I've never had a problem with that dry cleaner before. I don't care about whatever excuses you have lined up. You're a disgrace. I'm not making excuses. But I do think it's worth pointing out that you've gained a little weight recently. That could be why the suit isn't fitting right. What? I haven't gained any weight. I'm in the same great shape I've always been in. I've got good genes. Neither of my parents have ever been overweight. Trust me, weight isn't something I've had to worry about. The suit shrunk. That's it. I'm just saying, you've been eating more than usual lately. That has nothing to do with anything. I wish you would drop it. I go out every day and work hard. And here you are trying to put the blame for your mistakes on me. You try and make me out to be the bad guy all the time. I'm getting more than a little tired of it. I'm not trying to blame you for anything. Look, I'll make it simple. All you have to do is call the cleaners and demand to be reimbursed for the suit they ruined and then go get me a new suit. Think you can handle that? I can't call the cleaners for that. They didn't shrink the suit. That's not what happened. Look, I need a new suit. This way, it won't cost us as much. God, I wish I didn't have to work tomorrow. But if you're gonna force me to spend money we don't have, I guess I don't have a choice. Just call me once you've taken care of it all, okay? Okay, I will. Hey, I need you to get me a new bag to pack my lunches in. This one is too small. But I just bought you a brand new one. I don't know what to tell you, it's not big enough to put all the food in. I had to buy a sandwich from the shop around the corner from my office today. Really? I put plenty of food in there to get you through the day. I didn't ask what you think. I told you that it wasn't enough. Pack more food from now on, even if you need to buy a new lunch bag. Aren't you worried about your health, even a little bit? Why do you complain about my health so much? If you're worried about the money for the extra food, don't be, I'll take care of it. Just do as I say. I'm not complaining, it's not the money that I'm worried about. But if that's what you really want... It is, you're always nagging me about money. I'm trying to save money by taking my lunch instead of eating out. Even though I know you eat out for lunch all the time. That's not true at all. I never eat out unless it's with you. Whatever, I'm not arguing with you. Get a bigger lunchbox for tomorrow. Oh, you need to make it taste better too. I don't know what you're doing, but this is way too bland. It's like eating nothing but plain rice. And by the way, my boss is coming over for dinner tonight. You'll need to make a proper dinner to help me impress him. I'll let you know when we're on the way there so you can have it ready when he arrives. Wait, what? What do you mean he's coming over for dinner? I told you this morning that I won't be able to get to the store for groceries today. Do you want him hungry at our house? How do you think that would make me look to my boss? Look, it doesn't have to be too fancy. Something home-cooked but simple is fine. Okay, I'll see what I can do. Hey, where is my insurance card? I've looked everywhere, but I can't find it. I thought you kept it in your wallet. It's not there, I already checked. Do you think I would be asking you if I hadn't already checked there? Why do you always make me repeat myself? Because I don't know where else it could be? What about the bookshelf in the living room? Did you check there? Yes, I did. It figures that it would go missing at a time like this. 
Is everything okay? What's happened that you need it right now? It doesn't matter. You really need to learn to mind your own business. God, you're nosy. I'm so tired of dealing with you. You probably know where it is, but you want to use it to force me into telling you something that's none of your business. If that's how you feel, then I won't try to help you anymore. Find the insurance card by yourself. Excuse me? Are you trying to make me out to be the bad guy here? No, it's not that. I just haven't seen it. You clearly don't want to tell me anything else, so I don't know how else I can help you. If I do happen to find it, I'll let you know. Ugh. I'm in so much pain, I won't be able to focus at work at all like this. You need to do something. Find that card and let me know where it is. I don't know how you think you can make demands of me like that. Especially when you refuse to tell me what you need it for. I'm not being nosy, I'm being your wife. I can't stop itching. There, is that what you wanted to hear? Itching? As in like a rash? Where are you itching? Like on your arm or something? Ah, you're still being nosy. No, it's not my arm. Don't worry about it. If you're not going to be helpful, I just won't bother with you. I'm going to the urgent care center to get it looked at. Did you find the insurance card yet? I'm not sure we have the money to cover it without insurance right now. I knew you would say that, always worrying about money. It hurts and I need to get it looked at. I've never had anything like this before. I'm not saying you shouldn't go, just that there might not be enough money in the bank account to cover it without insurance. Are you sure you'll be okay? Does it sound like it's okay? You don't listen to anything. I probably picked up a disease or bacteria or something from the food you cooked last night. I knew something tasted off about it. What? That doesn't make any sense. I ate the same food you did. If there was something in the food, I'd have the same symptoms. I don't know. I just know it hurts like hell. I'm almost at the urgent care center now. Let me know if you need anything. How are you feeling? Is the medicine helping at all? No, it's like it's not doing anything. This is seriously the worst thing that I've ever experienced. What is it? Was the urgent care able to find out what's wrong? Like I said before, it's your fault. What? They said that? Not in those exact words, but however I look at it, it all comes back to you. Hang on a second. What did I do exactly? You're carrying this disgusting disease. That's all I can think of. A disease? It's itchy down there. You did this. Stop messing around and admit it. I can't believe you would do this. This is grounds for divorce. You hear me? I want a divorce. You've made me suffer long enough. You're really going to say this is my fault? Of course it's your fault. Who else could it be? You won't be able to survive without me. I have all the proof I need to get a divorce. And then you'll be out on the streets. I promise you will regret this. Is that so? <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't hold it in anymore. You thinking you can punish me with a divorce is the funniest thing I have ever heard. Huh? It's finally time for payback. I can't tell you what a relief this is. Payback? Payback for what? What are you saying? I already filed for the divorce. What? You're lying. There's no way. I would have gotten the papers. I know how you feel about divorce. You're so against it that you'll never leave me, no matter what. You need to apologize to me right now, and then call my mother and apologize to her for the way you've treated her lately, too. You're such an idiot. It's you who needs to apologize to me. What? It's you who needs to apologize to me. Make sense now? Excuse me? Who do you think you are? 
the ex-wife of a misogynistic mama's boy. How dare you? I don't even know what to say. It's understandable that you might be a little confused. You always seem to have trouble understanding that I was your wife and not your slave. Is it starting to sink in yet? You've treated me like crap for long enough and I am divorcing you. Yo, oh, come on, you're being ridiculous. I've never treated you like a slave. Right. And that rash you mysteriously got? Whose fault did you say that was again? It's somehow my fault, right? Huh? Of course it's your fault. What exactly are you accusing me of here? I'm just saying, I think it's interesting that you apparently got that disgusting disease from me, yet I somehow have zero symptoms. If you had gotten it from me, I would have it too. Not to mention the fact that you haven't touched me in over a year. And on a side note, you haven't even noticed anything different about your clothes yet, have you? My clothes? What about them? You're such a greasy pig. Have you ever bothered to look at yourself in the mirror? What does that have to do with anything? And who are you saying is greasy? You, you idiot. Are you really this dense? You really haven't taken a look at yourself at all recently. Your shirts used to be a size small. How have you not noticed that you're wearing an extra large now? No way, that's a lie. You're just trying to get under my skin. Tell yourself that if it makes you feel better. You think you're still the young, attractive man you were at 20? But that's a thing of the past. The size of your suits has changed too. You didn't notice that either, I'm guessing. That's not possible. Maybe I've gained a little weight, but not nearly that much. You're making it out to be way worse than it really is. Check the size of the clothes you're wearing now if you don't believe me. Remember when you accused the dry cleaners of shrinking your suit? That wasn't what happened at all and you know it. You gained weight. A lot of it. To be honest, you kind of look like the villain in a children's show. <laughs> you ate more and more food every day. What did you think would happen? You just gobbled up everything in front of you like you wanted to do your best impression of a vacuum cleaner. I barely had to do anything. You made my revenge so easy to attain. How could you do that to me? Your own husband. You think you're such a good man? It's time to be honest with yourself. You went to one of the more expensive urgent care centers to have your rash looked at, right? But you don't make a lot of money, so you had to be really choosy with the tests that you agreed to have done. You admitted to them that you knew you had an STD. You refuse to take care of it before now because you're so stubbornly insistent that your health is perfect, despite all the evidence right in front of your face. As a result, the infection has gotten pretty bad. How do you know that? Easy. I looked up the medicine that they prescribed you. It hurts pretty bad, doesn't it? You poor baby. You're so pathetic. <laughs> Shut up. Just stop it. Why do you think it's okay to talk like this to me? Isn't it obvious? You got your STD from someone else. Your pain and your rash have nothing to do with me. You like to accuse me of whining about your weight? But your vanity is all that you can even think about. Shut up, that's enough. Is that the full extent of your vocabulary? Telling me to shut up? Don't be ridiculous, Amy. Shut up, Amy. Well, I'm not being ridiculous. I'm actually quite serious. You don't know how to be serious. You have no right to talk the way you do to people. You use crude language because you think it makes you seem strong. It doesn't. You are way out of line. You're going to need to take care of yourself from now on. You have no one to verbally abuse into submission. I doubt we will ever meet again. I don't want anything from you apart from a divorce. I'll go my way and you'll go yours, wherever that may lead you. Goodbye, Sean. Wait, hang on a minute. Amy, come back. You annoying witch. Don't think I'll ever forgive you for this. Huh? 
Forgive me for what? I didn't ask for your forgiveness for anything. It can't be anyone but you. You turned off the power to the house. I know it was you. Oh, that. That's not a problem for you, is it? You never used any of the appliances or anything while I lived there. Why would you suddenly need them now? Besides, all I did was tell the owner what the situation was and that I was moving out. Anything else he does with the house is up to him. You... Oh, have you seen the bedroom yet? Huh? The bedroom? What the hell did you do? Why are there feathers everywhere? This is a disaster. Why would you do that? It was easy. I just tore my pillow to pieces. They feel like angel feathers, don't they? What is wrong with you? You're insane. Oh, crap. There was something else I meant to tell you. I should have mentioned it earlier. It's probably too late by now. But there's a bunch of meat in the fridge. It might have spoiled since I left earlier. You should probably take that out. What do you think you're doing? When does this stop? You said I was annoying and ridiculous and crazy. I was only trying to live up to your expectations. Cleaning all that up will be a pain. Before you try, because I already know you will, there's no way you can talk me into coming back and cleaning it. This one is on you. I'll consider it the reparations that you owe me. I have to be honest with you. I already feel like a giant weight has been taken off my shoulders. I have nothing to feel sorry for. No feeling of guilt whatsoever. Can you forgive me for not feeling bad about leaving you? <laughs> I will never forgive you for anything. This is going to cost a lot of money to get cleaned up. Oh, and what exactly are you going to do to me? Should I watch my back when I walk the streets at night? You really should. I swear to God, you will be sorry. Thank you for the confession ahead of time. I'll make sure to forward your threat to the police. That way, they'll know who to look for if something happens to me. What? You can't do that. Even if nothing happens to you, that could go on my permanent record. Are you ready to start acting like an adult? If so, I'd love nothing more than for both of us to be able to move on with our lives. But just in case you want to continue being a petty child, I want to make sure that you don't get carried away or think you can get back at me. I expect you and your mother will probably work together to try and make my life miserable. I'm already used to her particular brand of horrible, so rest assured that I'm ready for whatever you try to throw my way. So bring it on. I've waited for this day for a long time. Come on. Would it kill you to be serious for once in your life? You think it's okay just to divorce me? Just throw me aside like it's nothing? Pretty much, yeah. I've made it this far after all. Did you think you could just cry that you don't want a divorce and everything would go your way? That I would just go back to being your doormat? You only have yourself to thank for this. Everything that's happening is a direct consequence of your actions. It's not like that. Oh, okay. So you thought you could shout about wanting a divorce after you went and picked up an STD, and I would beg for your forgiveness. Well, sorry. That's not going to happen. Not in a million years. Not ever. I will celebrate this day as a personal holiday for the rest of my life. Do you really hate me as much as that? Looking back, I only find it strange that I was ever able to love you at all. It just doesn't seem possible. I just can't imagine ever having those kinds of feelings for you. Go find another woman to be your slave. I'm done. Wait. Hey. Amy. Sean realized very quickly how much I'd done for him throughout our marriage. He and his mother begged me to come back. But of course, I refused them every time. He stalked me at work for a little while, but the police already had my report of his threats, so he couldn't take it too far. I knew for a long time before I left that I wanted out of the marriage. I just didn't know how to do it. I never expected him to actually get an STD. 
But when he did, I saw an opportunity and I took it. Maybe I took things a little too far in turning off the electricity to the house and destroying a few things on my way out. I just couldn't stand the thought of him going home to a house that I worked so hard over. He only ever belittled me and I couldn't stand the thought of him enjoying a house I made. So I made a mess of everything I could before I left for the last time. That night I moved into an apartment that I had been eyeing for a long time and bought a cat the next day. We've been living happily together ever since.